afternoon. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Ranger School. Uh, we're going to do the next part on the saddle series that we're doing. We bought Mama a saddle. It was a used saddle, but it was in really good shape. And uh, so we are doing a series on what we're doing to that used saddle when we got it. Now, in the previous video, we took the stirrup leathers out, took them completely off, and Mama thoroughly cleaned and oiled the saddle, oiled the stirrup leathers, oiled everything. So now on this video, this is how to reinstall the stirrup leathers. Um, now I got several comments on the last video. I got a number of comments and they were right. They were correct. Uh, they said, you know, if you, if you, when you go to pull your stirrup leathers out, if you'll tie a, a string, a heavy, heavy string uh, to your stirrup leather, coming off maybe a piece of raw hide or a piece of fishing line something that's not going to break then as you pull your stirrup leathers out then when the string when the stirrup leather comes all the way out untie the string from the stirrup leather leave it there and then when you go to put them back in tie the stirrup leather back to the string and then pull it through a lot like pulling electrical wiring through conduit you run the wire puller through you attach it to the wire and you pull it back through and I've used that method before. It's a good method, it works. Um, it's just on this one, I was concentrating on the video, concentrating on what I was doing and I forgot all about that. So I didn't do it. So we did things the hard way. So mom and I already put the one in. And so with this in, I'm gonna show you what it's going to be on the other side. So you've got to come on top of your, your uh, you're rigging this rigging leather. You got to make sure you're not underneath that. So come on top of it. And if you can see in here, the tree, the leather is slotted out, has been skived out for the stirrup leather to go up in there. And there's a slot there. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the, uh, the stirrup leather in. Now, what we did before we started this was mama took this down to the creek and got this uh, really wet about halfway up so it's nice and pliable and you're going to want that you're going to need that to be pliable so it goes up and over the tree and back down okay and uh, so that's that's what we're going to do with the other side now we're going to fight it a little bit because i didn't do the string but uh we got that one done i'm confident we'll get the next one done by the way um before we go, when I took this apart, took this screw off, and I want to show you on this. By the way, just, just a little piece of info. If you ever have to replace these screws that are in here, they're, they're like a cupped washer. That's not a specialty saddle deal, okay? I've had to replace them before, and you can just buy those at a hardware store. You can get them at Ace Hardware, at Lowe's, or Home Depot, or something. So you don't have to go fretting around trying to find a specialty saddle hardware to put in there. So anyhow, when I pulled these out, I noticed I got in here and saw the rigging on this saddle. Now I talked on a previous video about the difference between a well-made saddle and a production saddle that's not as well-made. This, these are these heavy screws. Plus there's all these nails, okay? That is attaching this rigging to the tree of the saddle. Now this saddle is made by Jay Black down here in Alabama. And there are these little saddle companies, these little saddle shops all over the United States where guys are quietly in there for 20, 30 years building saddles one after another, good quality saddles. You can't run down to your local saddle shop a lot of times and buy one. You're not gonna find them for sale a whole bunch of them like a Hillison or something on eBay. Um, but they're good saddles and they're built right. And if you can find something like this, again, like I said before, you're way ahead. Uh, instead of buying a production saddle, that brand new cost a thousand dollars. Um, and uh, it, they're gonna be, cause everyone has that man's name on it. All right, you buy a, you buy a, Coriani saddle. Who built that saddle? 
how many different people built that saddle. Their name's not on it, and they don't care. This man's got his name on this saddle. These little shops all over. Uh, it's a, it's, and that's one of the reasons. What they'll do is I've seen um, Coriani sandals taken apart, and they'll have drywall screws. It's what's holding this in. Now, if you've done any construction at all, shear strength is the shear on the screw, the amount of pressure it would take to break that screw. Okay, not break it out, but break it down. They don't have shear strength. Um, and if you've put in a decking, how many times have you gone to screw and you hit a knot in the deck and that screw head just, the screw just breaks. It just shears right in half. They're not strong, but they're cheap and they're fast and they're easy. And that's why those are not good saddles. Uh, they may fit the horse. All right, the tree itself may be a good tree and it might fit the horse. But that doesn't mean that everything that has been attached to the tree has been attached properly and that it's gonna last, okay? Uh, so that's a really important aspect about, about buying used saddles. That's a big difference between a quality saddle and a, and a cheap saddle, okay? Um, so anyhow, so we're gonna, we're gonna work on the other side and we're gonna get that stirrup leather put in. Okay, we've taken the saddle and we've laid it down on a table so it's up waist high and we can work better. And you can see down in here, there's the tree, there's the slots. So we're going in through here and we're gonna come back out through here. pull that through quite a bit like she's doing there you go that's good because you, and then you're going to turn and feed it right back up through and you're just going to be careful that you come up through that bottom slot right there now one of the things that'll get you in trouble if you don't pay attention is if you get off that slot and you get back in here so you're not in here where you got room help you hold that okay i think you're going to want to come up in here get it in there at all. and i'll help you hold here you go let me give you some space here and i'll see if you can right here mm -hmm. okay you want to trade jobs here for a second because i got stronger hands not yet. Not yet. She says she wants to cowboy up. There you go. Well, I can tell everybody it's not just your hand strength. I can feel it in my abs, in my back, and my arms. going. Let's see if we're coming in the right place in here. It's right there. Right see? there? Okay. there. 
right there. See it? I think it's back That's a little it. bit. To the car back this way. Yep. I think it needs to be over here a little bit more. Right, right. So that gives me an idea. I'm gonna get down here and push instead of tall. because another hole just disappeared. Look, there it is. Not quite ready to grab yet. There you oh. go. <laughs> okay, so Was folded up in there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Good there, job. Right All right. Yay. Okay, we got the stirrup leathers in. Now she's just putting everything back together. So we put the slide for the Blevins buckle on first. Thread the stirrup leathers through. Now, every saddle does not do their stirrup leathers exactly the same with the Blevins buckle. Some of them are in the front somewhere in the back you just gotta figure out what works for your saddle okay and then she's gonna put the stirrup hobbles on you gotta have stirrup hobbles on if you come off your horse and you're coming off the other side and that stirrup slides up with you and hangs up then you're in big trouble but if the stirrup can only come up to that piece of leather she's buckling on there you've got a better chance of your foot coming out of the stirrup when you're getting bucked off okay there you go this is why i can't have nice pretty nails fingernails Okay, well, here she is. All put back together, except we gotta put the cinch on uh, and we're gonna turn the stirrups. And uh, we had promised a video on that several weeks, months ago, uh, but we didn't have a uh, saddle that needed the stirrups turned. Well, this one does. So we'll be turning these stirrups and we'll get that video out in the next few days. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, doing all the work on this saddle. Uh, it's my very own saddle and so I was determined to get the work done and learn. I really wanted to learn and Duane is such a great teacher and um, he allowed me to do all the work even though that was harder it would have been easier for him to do it by himself. So um, I, uh, I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate you all following along with us. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something um, like I did. You know it, it, a lot of the work was hard 
it was, some of it was just time consuming, but I was determined to do it and do a good job of it and, and I got her done. So now I have a, a great saddle and uh, next time you, you see it, it should be on Biscuit because Dwayne's going to get Biscuit and Boone and Rodeo uh, from Texas and bring them over here to the property so we can use them for the school. Uh, so I can't wait to see how the saddle looks on Biscuit, how it fits fits him and uh, and get to ride my horse again. And uh, so thanks again guys for, for supporting us. I'm so excited. This is, uh, this is a, a great adventure for us and uh, we really appreciate your all support and uh, you guys have a great day.